medicine after suffering a life-changing injury while working as a pediatric nurse. Mickey and the Plant is a pillar of medical cannabis advocacy and a champion for the importance of sharing patient stories. She is planning on creating this first product line focusing on cannabis and the science behind why cannabis helps support her chronic pain, cognitive function, anxiety, and depression. Nikki is on the patient advisory board for New York State Americans for Safe Access and for Cannabis BPO. Nikki is considered a leading voice in the community, chronicling her journey from being a healthcare provider to a patient to an advocate. She hopes to bring worldwide awareness to invisible illness and disability. Ladies and gentlemen, Nikki Lawley. Is this a walkable mic, or do I have to like stay stationary? Just hook it out, or you can go anywhere you want. Yeah, guys, all right. Because if you know me, I don't stand still for long. So hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Everyone enjoying the conference? I think it's been pretty awesome. I mean, this is my first year, and I'm super really in awe, especially after yesterday and the culinary experience. It was just something I just never thought would be here in Western New York. Like it was way more advanced than I knew about. And I'm pretty in the know. So for me to not know that that's right in my backyard is a little concerning. And so I think it's important and that's kind of why the patient voice is important and why industry leaders should take notice is because we're the ones on the ground. We're the ones that need to spread the word. I'm considered a credible voice in cannabis. People are gonna listen to me before they listen to the dune in the low pants and the, the dreadlocks. And I don't mean that in any derogatory way at, at all. I truly mean when you walk into a room, I mean, it was explained to me like this by Jordan Wagaman. He literally said to me, he said, you and I walk into a room. Immediately, my 80-year-old grandfather, even though, pretend he's not my dad, but we walk into a room, he's gonna listen to you before he listens to me. Because you're a former nurse, because you are so educated on the plant, he's gonna listen to you even though I've been talking to him for five years about taking cannabis. <laughs> he's like, you know, but it's true, and patient stories are what we need to hear about because the patient story and the patient voice is what's gonna drive those sales. I mean, it's, it's true, like at the end of the day, no one can survive in this industry if they don't find a way to monetize it. And you can have all the followers in the world, you can apply for all the greatest jobs in the world, but at the end of the day, if the company doesn't value the patient voice and the patient story, it really doesn't matter. Because it's really hard for me to get behind any brand that doesn't recognize patients. Because, let me give you a little 411 here, friends. Without patients, without legacy growers, there would be no adult use market. We would not even be having this conversation. And a little background, I feel like most of you know my story, so if you don't, please look it up, nikkiandtheplant.org, because I don't want to bore you because there's way too many cool things going on to just rehash a story that most of you already know. Um, so in coming to this, what do I, What's my message? What do I want everyone to kind of take away or be a call to action? It's recognize the stories matter. Storytelling is the way of the future. Storytelling and people being able to relate to that person's journey. Not everyone's gonna relate to a traumatic brain injury survivor, and that's okay, but they're gonna relate to the 60-year-old breast cancer survivor. They're gonna relate to the woman with chronic pain or headaches or whatever that doesn't have a brain injury, the woman going through menopause, they're going to respect that story because they're going to be able to relate to it. 
And I think that's why I've made such an impact on so many people. And I don't say that in any way, shape, or form as a bragging or, you know, sensationalist kind of thing. But I went literally from taking my life to literally living again, to being able to function when I lost all functionality. When I say lost all functionality, I'm a former casino dealer. So math, no problem. Fast math, no problem. I couldn't recognize change, what the value was or how much it was. When I went to the grocery store and my bill was $80 and 68 cents, I had a meltdown, like right there. That's scary. If you knew who I was before I got hurt, like that would totally freak you, the old Nikki out. Like, whoa, <laughs> you have gone to a new level of crazy. And when you're fighting with an invisible illness, it looks fine on the outside. Everyone thinks, oh, there's nothing wrong with her. She's like famous. She's like, oh, look at everyone wanting to get their selfie with her. Like, it's not about that. But people recognize, I don't want to say good people, because there's a lot of good people that don't get recognized. And we need to talk about them. We need to bring them to the table. We need patience at the table so that we can help guide, whether it's formulation, whether it's packaging, labeling. Whoever thought it was a good idea at the OCM to maximum say the font is eight point, <laughs> clearly they aren't over 50. <laughs> Seriously? It's just crazy, some of the rules and regulations, when we're still patients. To have to use a chisel to get into your medicine, because it's like 50 layers of packaging, and you know, of course, you know, the RO or packager went for the cheapest option possible, so there's no little pull tab even to open that medicine easily. So, you know, you're literally ripping your hand off trying to open it. That is not patient friendly. To have telemedicine is really important for patients to get their card, but there should be follow up afterwards. One of the reasons I like the medical program in New York State is because if you were here for Jeff Lombardo's talk earlier, a pharmacist actually looks at the patient's medicine, what they're currently taking, like the warfarin thing. I knew CBD and warfarin didn't mix, but I didn't understand the whys behind it, and I learned that today. Every day you learn something new about plant medicine, and being able to share that knowledge in a way others understand I think is so important. And I think we take for granted what people know. I think it was, I don't even know, it was one of the speakers earlier, and they said, people don't know what they don't know. And I say that all the time. If you would have told me when I was a nurse that cannabis was medicine, I would have said, yeah, okay. Well, for the people that have AIDS, the people that are dying of cancer, I mean, who cares if they get high, you know? I mean, like, even as a nurse, that compassionate understanding just wasn't there. Because when you hear about the war on drugs from Andrew Fiangelo, who did an amazing chronological of the whole reason this plant is demonized, you begin to understand how deep and how many layers and how severe the misleading was. And you learn that, like, holy shit, I've been lied to all my life. Like, it's not, it's, it was eye-opening to me as a nurse that I wasn't taught about an endocannabinoid system. 
an endocannabinoid system is responsible for the homeostasis of our body. Homeostasis is balance. What in the hell? Why have I not heard of an endocannabinoid system that's responsible for balancing people out? Why? You know, that is beginning to change, but it's so slow. And the only way it's going to change is by people like every single person in this room. We may not have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. I'm not here giving anyone medical advice or saying cannabis is going to cure anything. But cannabis allows me to passion. Cannabis gives me something that I didn't have after I suffered my traumatic brain injury. I mean, I didn't have it at all. I could not function. Everyone says, why do you wear the polka dots all the time? Well, quite honestly, truth, if every single one of you in this room would wear that exact outfit every time I saw you, I would remember who you are. But the part of my brain that got hurt pretty much erases everyone's face. So I figure, as <laughs> it's sort of like as my coping mechanism, and I'm just hoping that it passes on to the, to the world, right? Um, <laughs> everyone, just wear the same outfit over and over again, and I'll remember <laughs> who you are. That's all you gotta do, and I'll actually really remember you. But as soon as you change that outfit, even if I see you later tonight, I probably, and if you don't have a name tag, so hence why I always wear polka dots because cannabis connects my dots and I always have a name tag. If everyone could wear a name tag, again, my life, and I, I really feel a lot of people are embarrassed to admit that they don't remember people's names, right? And I literally can be talking to somebody for like 10, 15 minutes and they have no clue. And like, I fake it really good, but it's always helpful to say, hey, Nikki, it's Gloria, <laughs> you know? Or, hey, Nikki, I know you, oh God, we met at NCC, okay, great, that just helps me so much. Because that part of my brain is just damaged, and I can't fix that with cannabis, but cannabis does help with so many other things. I can't count into detail. I could never be a dealer again, but I can do fives and tens now. <laughs> so everything is done in multiples of five or 10. You learn coping mechanisms. And I think it's really important to share these vulnerabilities, but share that cannabis has really had such an impact in my life that I feel strong enough that I can get off disability. Like, if you would have told me in 2017, 2017, I would like literally tell you there is no way I'm ever going to be able to work again. If you would have told me I would be a speaker, advocate, and be part of the whole political system, and you know, be known, and all these things for cannabis, I mean, I would have just said there's no way. But the universe does crazy stuff, and. We have to trust the journey. And I have been very frustrated, shall we say, with the industry because there's been not a lot of financial coming into the industry right now. However, the, RS, uh, the MSOs, AKA the ROs, our medical cannabis providers, they are doing quite well because now they're allowed in the rec market. And what that means is they now have the medical market and they now have the rec market. They can put their products in any of the 40 stores or 44 stores now that we have in New York State, which they need outreach. I represent a whole different category of a salesperson. I'm a storyteller. I bring practicality to the plant. I explain things in a way that other people understand or can relate to. So knowing that, 
why would company not have me part of those decisions or see that value of that reach of that you know experience i mean i've tried thousands of products i'm literally the best r d you could ever have <laughs> my sack is filled with herbs just because not People try different things. I talk about the packaging all the time because it's really a big deal to me when I can open the, the packaging. I mean, big deal. It's like, oh my God, I opened this without a tool. You know, I, it's really a big relief. But like, people don't know what they don't know. So the guy at the factory who's putting on the labels at the RO, he doesn't think that maybe I should not put the sticky label on both sides of the box so you need a, you know the razor blade to cut it open so you can get into it because these stickers are like you can't remove them so we need to talk about that but like the guy at the plant doesn't notice it so and if he doesn't know what he doesn't know you know just that simple little change so being able to liaise between the community and the retail, to be able to share the stories of the farms and what they've gone through to get where they are today, the journey of a dispensary who is really servicing a lot of medical patients just because of location, convenience, whatever that may be, we need someone to educate these people because one bad experience with cannabis, they're never gonna try it again. You know, when we talk about the ride of edibles and how they can be not so fun of a ride, just like someone was talking about earlier, they take, you know, one five milligram gummy and then it goes to two five milligram gummies and then, oh, this is really good. I don't feel anything. And then we go to three, five milligram gummies, sort of 15 milligram gummies, and we have a raw endocannabinoid system. We've never done this before. I then have some buffalo chicken wing dip. I have some french fries. I have all of this fat, great tasting, greasy, awesome food. Friends, I just magnified that cannabis experience times anywhere between five and 500% to the point where I was with my friend, the researcher, true story. And we were in Vegas and she had never done cannabis, but yet she worked for a cannabis company and she did cannabis research, but she didn't touch the stuff. She was a nurse and, but she helped a lot of patients. We go to Vegas, we do Awana, it's a big brand, uh, W-A-N-A, and uh, one, one edible. So that exact scenario happened. So she had a one-to-one, 10 milligram gummy. She yawned. I said, oh, hell no, girl. We are in Vegas. It is one o'clock in the afternoon. It is not sleepy time. So you need to chew another one of these edibles right now. And so she did. Then we had chicken wing dip. She got the munchies like I've never seen anyone devour leftover cold ass chicken wing dip. I mean, it was cold, friends, cold. And she devoured it all of a sudden. Now, Sabrina being the researcher understands too much THC you need CBD, and that will counteract it. She kept saying to me, Nikki, I need CBD. I'm like, I can't leave you like you are. You can't even move. I mean, like, you legit, she could not move. She was hallucinating, literally tripping balls. And, and I mean, in a bad way, um, like hallucinating, like your <laughs> stupid wallpaper. I thought someone spiked her water in the cab <laughs> because like, I couldn't understand what was happening. But when you eat a super fatty meal, you just gave THC its 
powerful for them. So I didn't understand that was happening because I can, myself can eat far more edibles than the average human because I lack the cytochrome gene to metabolize things in my liver. So I learned that after about a 2,000 milligram experience and still not feeling anything. <laughs> so after understanding that and learning that, it made all the difference. Um, and then I learned what nanotechnology was. And so nanotechnology hits the average person within five to 15 minutes compared to the edible scenario I just explained to you with Sabrina. So this edible with Sabrina, back to the next story, I'm mean, really not digressing, but Sabrina greened out like I had never seen in my life. I was a pediatric nurse, friends. Little kids can puke a whole lot. Sabrina surpassed the most barf I've ever seen in my life. Okay, I used to pay people at work, I would say, oh no, you gotta take the kid that's puking. And, and you gotta do the strep test because hell no, if that kid pukes, I'm done. Like, can't deal with it. Like, it's a real thing. So, <laughs> Sabrina is barfing, and I go to run and grab the garbage can from the room. It's leaves, guys. It's metal leaved leaves. <laughs> they weren't together. It was now a fountain of vomit. It was so much puke. <coughs> and then what happens? I call downstairs and I say, I think my friend's been drugged. And we had cannabis sitting out on the table. So then they call a code. We have a 426 in the room, 3101. <laughs> and I'm like, shit, what's a 426? That you have marijuana in your room. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm patient. I've got cards. I mean, like, I've even got a California card. I got a Nevada card. I got a card in New York. I got cards wherever I can get cards. And they're like, that doesn't matter. You're in a federal casino. We'll lose our gaming license if we allow you to keep your cannabis. It doesn't matter that it's legal in the state of Nevada. It doesn't matter just because you're in a, the federal law scheduling thing, in my lifetime, if that ever got descheduled, oh my God, the things we could do with this plant. The research we could do to literally prove my experience with cannabis in a way that's, you know, not just subjective, but actually objective. Do that double blind placebo controlled study that all physicians just seem to have this absolute ridiculous need for. It's a plant, <laughs> okay? Using isolates is not going to have the same effect as whole plant medicine. So understanding that we all need to use our voice and do it in such a way that others want to listen. I believe that was a Ruth Bader Ginsburg quote. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, we all need to come together. Being our own little flag in the, in the ocean and not working with your neighbor because you think your neighbor is going to steal your idea, guess what? They're not you. And at the end of the day, we can have thousands of advocates and, you know, educators but they're not gonna to talk to you like I do because they're not coming from my experience. So everyone relates to people differently. And industry leaders, again, whether it's the Office of Cannabis Management, why would you not have me on a board? I'm just saying, I don't mean that because I'm so wonderful, but talk about a lived experience. Talk about having the respect of physicians, and nurse practitioners, PAs, being not necessarily an equal, but having respect, to literally being told there's no way you could be having symptoms of a concussion. 
three months, six months, 12 months later, there's no, your anxiety and depression is what's causing your headaches. I have a headache that doesn't go away ever. And I don't mean a little bit, a little bit discomfort where we pop a Tylenol. I'm talking a whiplash type injury that like literally tore, not tore in half, but damaged my ligaments in my neck. So it impedes my artery in my neck. And so it just becomes a whole thing that I live with a headache. But cannabis allows me to function with that level of pain and that level of discomfort. And people don't understand that I don't get high, I get medicated. I don't sit and smoke 10 joints.